Hello and welcome back to the Wisdom Factory. I'm Heidi from the wisdomfactory.net and we do again an interview in English. Lately I did a lot in English because my husband Mark, American, he died and afterwards why would I speak in English where I don't really know the language and so it's very rare now that I talk in English and I'm very happy to have found today Andrew McDonald. I met him in Integral Life in the forum and we talked a little bit about, you know, some elephants in the room <laughs> and about certain topics and we came together and I thought it would be wonderful to talk about these things. As we met in Integral Life, you might be interested and also uh, figure out that he is interested in integral theory and in evolutionary theory and he has written already a book evolutionary you so maybe before we start and talk maybe about the book uh, could you introduce yourself i know that you are in canada in ottawa and have seen what had happened last month there so yes i was there i was there several times heidi i was there three times I have to say that the energy on the street, the first day that I went there was really extraordinary. There were, it was, it was a very cold and sunny day in Ottawa and cold is really cold for you guys. Uh, well, particularly in Italy, but for Germany too, it was really cold. <laughs> and every time I tried to take some pictures, um, my hand would freeze so quickly. I dropped my phone at one point and partly cracked the glass. But the energy on the street was absolutely unprecedented for Ottawa. I spoke to, I think, three sets, either groups or individual people from Quebec who told me that they had never felt Canadian before. That's how you know, we're really two solitudes in some ways, Canada, and they were so touched by what was happening there on the street. It was a very, very deep welcome, a little bit of the energy of a party. That's mm -hmm. when the party's really going at two o'clock in the morning and everybody's talking to everybody else. There was very little alcohol, hardly any alcohol. I saw one person drinking a, <clears throat> from a can of beer, but and it was, it was not, um, yeah. It was a spontaneous outpouring of connection that was very much wanted to happen. It was truly extraordinary. Um, of course, the the truckers were there, but the people on the street were were um, pretty much ecstatic. I think would be a, a good word for it. So, with any individual, you could catch their eye and immediately start talking at a at a um, a very heartfelt level. It was it was amazing. That's yeah. wonderful to hear because I, in this crazy time in which we live, I think this will be our future of humanity. If we can survive, that must be the future to come together and celebrate each other and be human together and welcoming each other and connecting with each other. So it's, it's nice to hear that because uh, we heard uh, in alternative media, not in the normal media, we heard about um, uh, how badly they were treated, you know, that the police stole the gasoline and, and yeah. <laughs> all these yeah. Yeah. weird things, which you wouldn't imagine in a yeah. democracy yeah. to happen. Yeah. And the strange behavior of the president, I saw a video clip and, you know, so, uh, well, you probably that's know. what we heard. We heard also the other thing. And it's so nice to, to hear it from somebody who has been there and can transmit the, the yeah. feeling, you know, yeah. Yeah. it was it was really beautiful. Um, when you talk about that being our possible future. I love that. And I think that there for me, there are two poles looking at vaccine passports and uh, mandates and lockdowns and masks and a possible coming heavy control similar to China and the, and the credit system, social credit system. 
the opposite of that is the deep humanity that cannot be an algorithm can't be made for it and it can't be controlled and nothing else but that can be an alternative to the control that the algorithms and the big tech companies and the World Economic Forum and all of its, uh, you know, the corporate and governmental um, descendants from that want. So that's, it's, it's, there really is a kind of, or I guess a continuum with at each end, you see those two things. Yeah, that's wonderful. The question is, if we will be enough people to be, uh, you know, to stay in this mind mindset and develop it instead of being too much oppressed, too much put into fear. Now there is the new fear mongering thing uh, coming on in Europe. So the question is for me, if we can manage, if we are strong enough, I think our souls are strong enough when they have decided to that. But, but I also know out of my own evolution, let's say, how I was taken myself time ago by these uh, fears and by these beliefs into the, um, how do you call this? The belief that your government wants only the good for you and things like that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And this was really difficult to overcome oh. and to see and to face um, reality as it is because we have all sorts of psychological means to obscure the the truth in front of us or oh, the truth the you know the, the yeah. bad things let's yeah. say the bad things and to try and to choose willingly not to look to it and try hope into into other people's uh, right, how do you say rightfulness, other people's um, goodwill, other people's, um, how do you say, integrity, even if you have many hints that they are not, but you, you think, oh, it cannot be, you cannot be. And so many times in my life, I trusted people or so something in me knew that I shouldn't, you know, and still I did. So I can really understand so many people who are acting in this other way. And that's for my uh, question, will we be enough to shift into seeing reality without being completely destroyed by it? Because it's difficult to see them, to see that takes uh, some months when you really get the fullness of what is happening, you are destroyed. But by the help of other people together, we, we can come out and help each other. So the question, will we be enough? <laughs> yeah, that's a great question, Heidi. And it's a, a really a personal question for you. I can, I can see it. And, you know, I don't know the answer to that question, obviously, sure. but it has something to do with our own willingness to see at least something to do with that. What I notice is in many, many, even alternative places, people are wanting to talk about what other people need to do and what the problem is out there and, and exter externalizing it and not seeing that our, our, accountability and our responsibility is is the is what we need to support in my view support each other with and support ourselves with yes we have our individual meditations and our our reading and our watching videos but it's our 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 own ability to 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 be that, to, to be the change, I guess, and to see that it's around what we're doing that is that needs the change. Yeah, from integral theory, we know about the quadrants, you know? Yeah. There are some people who push everything on the outside, 
no, the bad uh, governments, the bad Putin, the bad, I don't know what. Bad and there are other people who say it's, it's only you, it's only your trauma, your uh, trauma, it's your, your um, you have to work on yourself and the, as if the outside didn't exist, you know, yes. and then yeah. the group think in the lower left uh, quadrant, then when you're in the wrong group, uh, then the other groups, uh, you know, or, or the this, uh, lower right quadrants, institutions, yeah, institutions are good if they are good, you know, but institutions believe to have to say what they do and only institutions. So what this partiality, excuse, do you call this partiality, that uh, people normally take only one perspective, maximum two, and we know from integral theory, we need to take four perspectives, yeah. Yeah. And not take absolute one, you know, so. Yeah, yes, and it's one thing to, to um, how to how to say it, um, we can have a theory about four quadrants or about inner and outer, but in actual practice, it's it's really difficult for for us people to do it. I and I was involved in men's men's groups and men's movements, and we did a. We had a, a, a journal called Every Man Men's Journal, and we had national conferences with men and women talking about gender issues. And there were two, two camps. One was men's rights, and one was mythopoetic or men's feelings and men's emotional development. It was so hard for those two groups to be in the same person or they stayed very very separate those two perspectives and and i noticed the same thing happening today that we're we're noticing the bad things that are happening in the world and we're we're telling stories and a lot of them are true about how how the forces are aligned against us and then there were people taking a very spiritual approach and my, this has been very important for me because I've been I've been in and uh, hosting we spaces for for quite a few years I don't even know how many but say say five or seven or something like that and the the more we we become in the we space the more spiritual connection and and heartfeltness and kind of joy of being together there is the less we want to make room for or are able to make room for the, the political perspectives or the idea of the great reset or of big challenges that are coming towards us, even though people privately may think that. So that getting the two, the two parts of us integrated so that we can be really connected with each other and also aware of the political dimensions. And I was very happy to connect with you on the, the Integral Life Forum because immediately we saw that each other was trying to bring those two together and, or interested in how, how we could think about them or even practice those two things together. Yeah. yeah. Even four things, you know. Yes. You yes, are I'm, talking about the, talking about the no? inner and the yeah. outer, but yes, it's, it's the, yeah, there's, the, yeah. there's the personal and the the uh, and the group as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's very important to see that. Yeah. Ah, oh, dear. So how how are you going on in this time? Well, what did you learn in your life to uh, to cope with the situation in which okay. we are now, and with the fears? I mean, there is a sort of fear, no? Also, we are not like, yeah. but there is still the, how do you say, apprehension? Is it the word apprehension of what yes. probably will come because there are yes. so many indices? Yes. To, so and, how and do you cope? And apprehension or anticipation? Anticipation, okay. Anticipation, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So... I do, I do const some constellation work and I'm very interested in 
personal trauma and personal development. And I'll just, uh, part of my own experience was that, and I didn't discover this until you know, much later, but I had, would say a poor, um, a poor attachment with my mom in particular, but in my, in my family of origin, there were some early problems that I didn't, of course, as a child, I didn't, I wasn't aware of those, but I grew up quite, uh, quite, I would say isolated inside and quite anxious. And it's really started to show up in my teens. And I, 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 without going into too much about my own story, because it's not about my own story, but I, I got oh, But it makes understand why somebody, one yeah. has chosen yeah. to, yeah. to be, yeah. So, so I was sort of unconsciously um, um, isolated and I became very much an escapist into nature. And I was, a, I was a, a wild nature guy, always sort of running away to the woods, partly to get away from uncomfortable feelings in my family. And, I, and camping and outdoors has been perhaps, you know, I sometimes have thought of it as being my real teacher, is the times that I spent there has been incredibly revealing to me, liberating, freeing, just to be able to breathe and to build fires and to be around them and, and, and to, to go canoeing in wilderness areas. And all, all of that has been incredibly you know, wonderful for me. And, and sort of liberating times where I felt myself and felt free to really be myself. Um, I got into the drug culture also shortly after university or immediately after university really. And I had some, because of my isolated and kind of anxious nature, it was not good for me. And I spent a lot of times struggling with the, the uh, effects of that or being both um, struggling between trying to have a good place in the world and trying to have a good place inside myself. It was mm. really a, a lot of struggle and a lot of tension with that. And that went on for a long time. What's, what has been started to be and has continued to be a resolution to all of that has been groups being being with people in groups mm -hmm. i was in a men's group for for the same one with some some uh earthquakes that we had in there but basically for about 18 years and that was a very very helpful helpful place to feel accepted welcomed for the way that i was and I continued with a men's interest or a men's group interest over much of that time. But I'm trying to remember exactly how it started. Um, yeah, I got connected to um, the work of Peter Block. I don't know if you're familiar mm -hmm. with him, but he's a, an absolutely wonderful, um, He, he, he wrote one of the main books on consulting, but he is a tremendous advocate for and, and clear um, ex setting out the rules for what really works with people in, in groups. It's just, a, it's marvelous, mar marvelous what he's done. Um, <clears throat> and I was participating in some small groups that were using his basically it's powerful works with powerful questions in very small groups of three and then you come into a larger group where the small groups come together and you reflect on so what struck you what it's a reflection space around the experiential space of the small groups and his his powerful questions are truly um, uh, power they're they're, they're powerful um, for example, he would look at, would ask you what's, what's possible rather than in your, for you, rather than what is the problem in your life, what's possible. And the question of possibility arises from what crossroads you're at in your life. So the question, a question would be, 
So what crossroads are you at in your life? And you'd share that in small groups of three and then come into a larger group. And he has six conversation areas. Possibility, which I just described being only one of them. So, so I, I loved that place. And then I connected to some of the people who were in that group and we started doing we space similar we space groups ourselves. We also offered them through Enlivening Edge magazine. I don't know if you're familiar with that, which looks yeah. to bring people perspective. So mm -hmm. we did community groups in with for Enlivening Edge for a number of years. Um, and I went on to do other other variants of that, some with forms, some without forms. I also had uh, and I'm just I'm really talking about how group spaces have been incredibly important for me. They also gave me a lot of the sense of um, belonging and safety that I experienced in nature as well. Mm -hmm. And I, in, in my local community, which is near Ottawa, in, in the country-ish small town, an hour west of Ottawa, we have had a group doing a variation of David Bohm's work mm -hmm. yeah. um, on dialogue. So it's a group that's been going, and I've been in it for something like 15 years. It's been, it was going for longer. But here's a, an interesting thing, Heidi, is that COVID, like it has in so many organizations, really put a uh, uh, a strong block into them from my per perception maybe that's not the right word exactly it made <clears throat> for people with different perspectives who were unclear about how they could belong in the group or unspoken how they could belong in the group with the others so even after all of that history and of course the people the, the people in the group had changed, but but um, that group was an example of what I see everywhere is that is that the whole COVID response has brought a kind of trauma or a kind of um, a rift, a, a a break within the groups that we're in, even the even the spiritual groups. So it's, it's not very safe for people to talk about, um, people fear that if they are honest about what they're expressing, it's, it, they're afraid of being excluded or on the wrong side, or it feels like it's not polite uh, to be talking about that. So what do you make of that? How, how come that that could happen? Where before was so much confidence and so much also trust in each other, and then comes along something and that splits the, the groups or the, the even families, I know from families, you know? Oh, husbands and, and wives. Yeah. How, how, how is that? Yeah, husband and wife, they might have other problems. So that might only they be. Might. <laughs> well, well, right. So, so uh, can I tell you my my sense of what that is? Yes. Because it's an incredibly, for me, it's a very, very important question. Um, I think that the, and it's got so many parts to it. So it's, mm -hmm. so bear with me for just, just for a second. So I think that the, the lockdowns and the, the masks and the, um, the, the, the spreading of the response to COVID everywhere rather than just focusing on the very elderly because it's not a very dangerous uh, virus for most people. That, that, that the, the way in which that came in so powerfully into society um, acted like a trauma that people could not, did not know how to respond to. It was everywhere in the media. So you can't say, it's hard to say no. It's hard to stand up to it. It's hard to have a language for it. In, in so many ways, in so many, many ways, I think it, it, was a essentially a tra traumatic, uh, isolating and 
and <clears throat> rift. Do you know that word rift? It's mm -hmm. a, you know, just a, a rift causing um, uh, intervention into, into society. I personally believe that now that it is um, intentional and planned mm -hmm. from, from, from a larger, uh, from higher up. And, and what, what I think has happened for individuals um, is that um, I, have to, I have to back up. This is, uh, <clears throat> I have to back up a little bit to our childhood experience. Mm -hmm. my, my, uh, I have some ideas about that, not all of which are, are um, you know, they don't, I, I do constellation work, but they, they're partly, they're, they're ideas that are still in formation. I guess I'll, I'll put it that way. So when a child is born, comes out of <clears throat> the safety and security of the womb into a family situation, which, which has, um, it's less safe and secure than inside the womb. The child doesn't get all of its needs met immediately. And some children get many more than others met. But the, the coming out is very terrifying for the, or, or very, the child is incredibly vulnerable when, when I'll, I'll say he, when, when he is born. And so in order to be, and, and afraid of being, afraid of not surviving. So in order to make that work for, for, for him, children uh, form very, very early biological personality traits, which look like, how can I be loved? We become, for example, a helper. <clears throat> well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be super helpful, give you what you want, so you'll, you'll love me. I'll be aggressive. I'll threaten you into, into loving me. Or I'll be incredibly helpless, so you'll just have to take care of me. Um, or I'll be cute and seductive in a way, so you'll think I'm so nice that you'll want to take care of me. Or I'll be <clears throat> I'll be funny and distracting. I'll distract you, so you so you won't see how how needy and how vulnerable I am. Very very early. Uh, as a very, very first biological response to, to, to life. And, and then we, we form a kind of like um, a, a pearl forms around a piece of dust. We form a, uh, we form a personality around, uh, on top of that. So that we're, and this, this sets up the whole dynamic of, of, how am I going to get enlightened? Because we've already accepted that we're not that we're not fully okay inside ourselves, mm -hmm. and we're we we are um, not fully in, in, not entirely able to grow up and be maturely ourselves. We're in a some, somewhat of a codependent relationship with our with our parents, um, and so when COVID. And the point of all that is that when COVID has come along, it has ripped off the the cover or the the uh, it's taken away the coping mechanism and the relationship we have with authority. It's it's intervened and, and messed it up in some ways. So we're we're uncertain. We don't know what we can trust. We don't know if we can trust the parent. Or not because it seems crazy it feels crazy to us and yet we have to do it and so we go into a what's essentially our early trauma gets surfaced uh, it, it get it is it doesn't work anymore it doesn't work the way it we've built a coping strategy but it doesn't work anymore for us so so large numbers of people are feeling isolated dislocated and um uh, and uncertain of which way to go. And it's at a very, very profound level in the self. And, and um, so, yeah. Yeah, um, I understand that. And also in the sense of 
uh, the problem with authority when you are so dependent on your parents they are necessarily your authority and you have to trust them or at least believe in some way also yeah. you might have the idea later on that mm, maybe what they are saying is not so right but as they have the power over you as when you are a child you you have to go along with it and then we know the stockholm syndrome no we even when we are tortured there's so many i even had a girl here uh, one of these uh, socially um uh, how do you say disadvantaged uh, children who are sent around and people try to make them uh, encounter other situations so that they can heal from their things so i heard from her how horrible the situation uh, was you know in in her family and so she developed certain mechanisms either fight like violent or completely um completely obey and we had a situation here when which finally we succeeded to uh, to 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 balance and afterwards she said why didn't you um hit me so it would have been over immediately so you know uh, people uh, when they get hit then they obey or do or, or do what the authority wants so as a as a pattern in in life no so we might have it a little bit less than this particular girl but that seems yeah. to be a biological thing you know that we yeah. Are yeah. dependent on authority and then later in life we have a difficulty to understand which uh, authority is benevolent and we should obey or follow and which yeah. we should yeah. better flee you know yeah, yeah. So, yes so from that point of view um maturity it, maturity is also spiritual maturity or, or it's 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 set up so that we have to learn all of this by hard work ourselves. How do we? How can we really grow up with respect to maturity? Be accountable for ourselves, um, and it's not. And of course, of course, uh, our parents and everybody's doing the doing the very best they can, as as are we. But the process of so we can say, or I can say, that the process of um forming a um a survival strategy when we're very very young is all is the same as spiritual sleep it's the same as being asleep and what and trying to wake up but you can't because it's it's difficult because you started so early i believe that we can work with all of that and i'm really interested in, in doing it um so I'll, I'll share a little bit about um my experience of groups and how we spaces do or do not allow that dynamic to be worked with are you with me are you with me on that does that make sense it makes sense but it's still strange because i also participated in many groups that um, out of the blue this uh with COVID, it came to this um separation and so that would mean uh, before when we were authentic and shared everything, blah, blah. Uh, were we still inauthentic? Were we still uh, dreaming or what, what had happened? I'll, I'll just say my, my, my view of that. It's not, yeah. the, it's not the final answer, yeah. but I'm, I'm, I'm excited about what's possible for us here. Because I think that so the early childhood dynamic, the very, very early childhood dynamic I was naming for all of us, not for, it's not for disadvantage, it's just for it's the state of being a child, mm -hmm. means that we, I believe that we form what I'm calling a survival strategy. So yeah. I'm going to be, I'm going to be helpful all, always, uh, then maybe I'll become a therapist, <clears throat> and, or I'll be, um, those other yeah. things that I yeah. mentioned, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and and I'm calling that a survival strategy. So typically, in all of the, in in very much of what we do around spiritual awakening, around therapy, around we spaces, 
don't get at that level of the survival strategy, which is so early. They're, they're, they manipulate, a, they manipulate our, our, um, the way that we integrate that into the world, they, but they, they don't get at the core of it because it's too, it's not safe enough usually for us to be in a place where we can really allow that to come up and work with it and see it, or just to see it and to be with other people and, and, and see it and accept that it's just normal. It's part of being human, but we don't yeah. need to find it. It there. has also to do with the self-image, no? When we have created a certain self-image and then comes something which is challenging the self-image exactly. and maybe I'm different. I'm not as good as I thought or not as kind exactly. as I thought. Oh, and exactly. now what happens? <laughs> exactly. You said it better than me because that's what I was trying to get at that mm -hmm. we've we have that very, very early experience, and then we build a life around it, yeah. right? And it's very, very hard to, very, very, um, it's hard for us to see that we've that we've done that, and that we're living a world of people who've also done that in some way. So this is, this is the waking up uh, um, invitation, I guess, for, for yeah. some way. And yeah. then you are saying you have this pattern of aloneness, more or less, I have too. And so for us, it is much more challenging probably, or maybe also more hopeful that we can succeed yeah. when we create a community. Yeah. Because for us to be in community is not easy. And when we finally decide, because we feel ready, then the community that's what I'm thinking now, could be a real community uh, and instead of a superficial blah, 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 blah. And as yeah. soon as something comes up, pew, explodes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, it, it, it may be a gift. It may really be a gift. Um, I, yeah, so I, I don't want to go, go too woo woo here. Um, So I, I wouldn't say for myself that I had that that um, I would describe my situation in, <clears throat> throughout my life as very much as having an, an because I experienced what I call a, aloneness or isolation and a very strong desire for connection, a very mm -hmm. strong a, 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 and also very strong antenna or what was, what was false, um, um, false connection or incomplete connection and what was real connection. Mm. Um, so you can also talk about it in terms of belonging. You know, mm -hmm. If you have a trouble belonging, mm -hmm. are very, very sensitive to belonging. And in groups, what I became, I think, a student of what belonging looks like you know hmm, why are they belonging in that group I don't feel I belong there so I became become a student of belonging and uh, so there's a tremendous gift a wake up potential a waking up potential that is in that um, that that sense of disconnection so it it, 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 it actually it, it is a gift and I believe that everybody or not, I don't believe that everybody but in the process of waking up, we have to get over that we're- um, You had a, there was a, a, a missing sound. Can we have to get over? Can you start there again? I uh, have to get over, sorry, put this, should have done, put, put my <laughs> microphone in front of me too. It does cut out occasionally for a word. Our naivete, mm -hmm. we have to get over our naivete mm -hmm. that we, we you know, the world pretends that everything is, we, we have our social ways of all is well. And in some ways it is. And there's also deeper movements that are needing to happen. And as you were suggesting earlier, a worldwide awakening or a, a widespread human awakening to wisdom is, is, needed now nothing uh, nothing else can stop the algorithm the machine or 
you know, our ability to support each other's authenticity, you know. Um, so we need to become better students in belonging and especially see when the belonging, what people thought they belong to now, and it is cut off to um, revisit the idea of belonging. What does belonging mean to me? Is it really the family? Or what is what is belonging for, for you? I'm asking you now. What does it mean for you? Yeah. Um, so that's what my my first my, my book, Evolutionary You, is is about that. Um, so we were talking about the child and the child's incredibly strong need to belong to the family and the parents. So, and even to the larger family, to, to the ancestral family and the grandparents and the wider family, because it's all in the, in the field that we live in, even in the womb, the child is aware in some way of all of that taking it into his body uh, all the time and and the this mental and emotional sense of the mother and her family connections and all of that so all of that is, is there and the child deeply conforms to that when born as a way in order to belong to the family he takes all or she takes all of that in deeply deeply conforms to the to to the requirements of the family and to the culture as well to the to the wider culture oh. it, it's, it's all it it's there as well so so we are born completely dependent on and completely conformist to the culture and then we go to school and we go into jobs and we do all of and, and we play with our friends all of which are between being myself and belonging here in this social in this social space, um, and we and we do it out of awareness. We don't realize that we we give up ourselves or we mm -hmm. don't allow ourselves to be ourselves in order to belong to the family or the group. Mm -hmm. This is, a, this is I, I believe, I mean, for me, it was an absolutely earth-shaking recognition that we, and it came from a casual comment uh, or, or a not very often explored philosophical comment of Hellinger, but it's part of, it's part of constellation work, that we um, we want to belong in the family. We want to believe, belong in the group. We want to be belong in the, in the organization. So unconsciously, and this is so primary for us to belong, unconsciously that we give ourselves, we, we um, We downplay our own inner sense and our own inner need in order in order to belong. So, so that and I love I, I, I love this. Um, it's, it's, this is so strong that our conscience, our sense of what is right and wrong, is actually has an awful lot to do with. Um, with belonging so that a good conscience means, oh, I'm staying connected to the people. I'm, I'm, I'm good in the family. I, I, I belong here or in the workplace or in the, the group. I belong. And so I have a good conscience. When that's not going well, or they're going to be people are suspicious of me, or I'm not sure that I am good with my relationships with them. I have a bad conscience. And that, that that 
I think that, so that moment to moment we go through our lives monitoring and taking care of our relationships that we we're in good yeah good good, good um, accord with others so that coming back to the present situation this as it has been stylized that when you get the shot then you belong to the good people the more belief that the more they feel a sense of belonging and so their own um, perception of good and bad is exclusively shaped by this group and as soon as somebody says but that is not right then it threatens their belonging so if they would start to think rationally about these things and say oh there is something very strange that would threaten the belonging thing and the exclusion of the group i mean there could be another group where they could belong but probably in this moment it is too painful and then they stay yeah. Yeah. in this group because they fear to be thrown out and be alone and be helpless survival they cannot survive when they trust their own intuition or their own mind or whatever which says uh, there is something which is not okay as long as it is against the group consensus yeah. is it that exactly in my opinion that's that's the, the way it is that and, and there's a lot to explore in there because it it partly depends it's not just another group it partly depends on how how bonded or connected you are to that group you know, oh, okay. mm -hmm. you can join some kind of group online or something, but that's not going to give you the the meaning sense that I belong here. If you're, for example, if all of your uh, family is vaccinated or your whole workplace where you've worked for 20 years, they're, they're all or mostly vaccinated. It's, stress, it's stressful for you, for sure. Um, yeah. So does it mean that people who are successfully refusing to to do what the majority thinks is the right thing to do does that mean that probably or with some chance these are people who never had a strong sense of or strong need of belonging to certain groups i think oh. that everybody has a has a so i should maybe should have let you finish your no question. no it was just my, an idea of mine because I feel that I never had this strong belonging to to a certain ideology or something to certain groupings, you know, I, I took part, but I never felt that is my ideology, you know, and so for me it's much harder to to believe in one truth so and and I was thinking that partly the people who still don't belong in the truth could be like me, which have no particularly sense of belonging to any um, a group who else is because we see it in integral people that's not necessarily uh, being on higher stages of development that makes opens your mind to some alternative way of seeing the things so what is it that some people are seeing and willing to see behind the surface and some just don't, and they just continue uh, to repeat the slogans they are hearing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that's this is a really important and large subject, Heidi. In my view, like it's got a lot of little pieces to it, um, or, or it's a it's a personal development um, work for each person to to go through. Everyone is different. But I, I think some, something generally that may be able to be said is that um, if we're, uh, yes, and, and it's what you were saying, is that if we have some, um, I'll call it loss of na naivete or, mm -hmm. or that, that, that we can automatically trust the good intentions of um of the of the authority mm. somehow perhaps very painfully and perhaps from our family that we have that we're not um that we've had to we've had to cope with a sense of not belonging 
-hmm. even though it's incredibly um, important for everybody. Everybody, every the dynamic between being me and and fitting in is the developmental workplace. You know, it's how do I stay myself while being connected to you and to and to the, the group, and it becomes. How do I contribute to the group? How do I help the group wake up? How do I maintain my own truth here or my own voice, especially my own voice and my own ability to stand for what's true rather than give it up or feel um, attacked or, or um, paranoid that people are gonna be against me for saying it. So, we all work through this in a very, very individual and complex you know, um, situation for it, a very personal situation. Yeah. And the situation we are in right now, it seems to me that more or less everybody in the world is concerned, is, is uh, touched by it. And everybody is asked to either go ahead in the personal development and grow up personally and spiritually, I mean, psychologically and spiritually, or remain in a sort of a childlike state. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a childlike state. So either, either uh, at the effect of authority or rebellious against it, mm -hmm. which is another, another kind of effect, mm -hmm. but, we're, but we still don't feel our, our own power. Or so, become part of the authority and then tell others what they have to do. That's right. That's right. <laughs> ally, uh, we uh, ally ourselves with it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Some so, people seem to find it very uh, satisfying, you know, when you see our politicians, how they show up sometimes in a, such a ridiculous way. When you think, uh, especially in Germany, you know, at the moment, it's you think, really? <laughs> You can only laugh on some people, right. you know. <laughs> right, right. So um, there's another big chapter in all of this. I don't know if we've got time to just go, go into it. I'll just open it up quickly. Maybe. Yeah, we might do another conversation. You go ahead, yeah. Okay, I'll, ju I'll just open it up quickly. Is that what I noticed, um, and, and it's also a reflection of me. It's not that I'm, I'm so wise in groups. I'm not. But I noticed that, or I my perception was that people in we space groups are trying to work on their early childhood stuff in the group. So they're projecting mom and dad and sister Alice or whatever, they're projecting either their early their early childhood and their life situation at the present. They're trying to work it out in the group um, by making other people in the group into mom or dad or, or the boss or, or, or whatever. Yeah. And, but this is all unconscious and not talked about. So my, my want is to work with, to, to, <clears throat> so in other words, our real issue is not welcome in most we spaces at least most we spaces that i've been in and i have done some of the number of spiritual teachers and stuff but our personal our personal deepest need the one i was talking to earlier our very early strategies for life are not welcome or are not part of we spaces usually and and until they are, we'll continue to work with the surface of things and try and try and get approval for our survival, for our cover story, rather than for our real story. Okay. And so I, so my, what I'm wanting to do and what I'm you know, starting to do, and I certainly welcome anyone to contact me who wants to, to, to do this, is to do a single constellation piece to together so to show what that early strategy is or what the, what the main survival need is mm -hmm. uh, or the er early strategy is, and then to be in a group in which we welcome that 
and work on becoming accountable for our own early strategy and yeah. you know seeing it as a story that can be filled it's not the whole of who we are but something that we can work with and expand and and fill out and become more accountable for so that's the direction i think that will that will that i want for myself i want to be in spaces and i really appreciate you giving me the chance to to share some yeah. of my story with that with all of this be, um is to have a group where people are rigorously being self-accountable rather than what we usually do is projecting a story onto somebody else who will do it who, who will do it for us yeah so it means having very strong boundaries around you know around what is mine and what is um yeah, yeah. around not projecting onto others um but our own it needs to be learned to know what when when you project it's not so easy most people don't know it but you know you talked now about the groups and things you are doing i think now is the space where you can share your your projects uh, also again your book where people can get it and how they can reach you and the courses and whatever you want to do a little bit yeah. of a pitch yeah yeah <laughs> thanks thanks Heidi so yeah so the gr the group that I I I, I only just in the, very very recently I've just I, I was doing a, a drop in group for 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 years. Or, what does it mean a drop in group? Just to a drop in group. Yeah. Okay. Uh, drop in, so people can come and you don't have to. Mm. You might reg you register perhaps, but you don't uh, you don't have to um, be Com committed for a long period of time, and it's not a closed group. And so different people are coming in and out. Um, and I've, you know, some, sometimes it may be Bohemian dialogue or Peter Block's kind of powerful questions work or just, uh, just see what happens. Uh, and I'm realizing that I really want to do this group I was just describing to you. I, and I have, and I'm working with individuals on, with constellations and with, with trauma work and with other um just trying to make space for for the the system dynamics in people's in people's lives but i haven't combined that with this the trauma work or the family and system constellation work with the accountability and the waking up process in a group that I've been talking about and and I've been um, I think in my in myself not <clears throat> not uh, just realizing that's what I need to open up, open to and open up in my in my in my practice so that's uh, sort of a work in I'm kind of consciously bringing that group together mm -hmm. um, and stopping doing the drop-in stuff maybe once a week, mm -hmm. once a month rather, and being kind of a fun, more of a fun place, but not pretending that I'm doing the real deep work because I don't yeah. think it's happening. No, but, you can't because you need a sort of safety net and you need to know the people before you can go uh, deeper and yeah. allow yourself to, to show you without any mask. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we have to name the distinction between what we usually do and what we can do. People are it has to be really clearly named, and I and I've been, I've been reluctant or unclear to fully name the set the boundaries in the group. It's it's my own my own unfinishedness that I have not done that. So 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 that's the want. Um, my book is called Evolutionary You. I honestly think it's really good, um, and, and I'm very very proud of it. And um, it, it describes that whole belonging phenomenon and how we learn to hide our voice well. And it's a lot of fun to read. It's a very up, it's a very up read for all of the heavy stuff that's in it. Uh, oh, not heavy stuff that's in it. For all of the challenging stuff, it's very, it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's an idea book and it's challenging. 
and uh, I'm working, <clears throat> I'm, I'm doing another one now that's related to the things that we've talked about on this, uh, on this call and it's bringing in the challenges in the world and the great reset and how the individual can, can stand up to that. Mm -hmm. um, the webs my, my website is andrewmacdonald.net and people can people can sign up there and there'll be a lot more um you know a lot more celebration of bringing together those two parts the the spiritual and the 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 worldly challenges that we have with my i have i too have kept those in two separate somewhat in two separate tracks i've written about them <clears throat> i've not really fully owned the connection between the two so it's so, time for the integration isn't it it is it is I'd instead love of resetting into separation and uh, and loneliness and 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 being dominated it's time for integrating and collaboration co-creation that's what i think for a few many years i would say and we are working on it and i thank you for the interview and we might go on with another uh, topic uh, some other time. And for today, I say thank you and... Thank you, Heidi. <laughs> thank you so much for, for your interest and your... Um, I really resonate with your exploration and your, your heart and all of this, so thank you. Yeah, me too. Thank you to, to you. Yeah.